We're talking about three tips for shaking off crystal critics and boosting your confidence. So I'm Hibiscus Moon, founder of the Hibiscus Moon Crystal Academy, and we teach and I certify people as crystal healers and teach all aspects of working with crystals. So I do have a question for you today. Please go ahead and answer this in the comments below right now. Do you feel your do you feel that you are crystal confident? Like I got this. I can talk to anybody about this. So just say yes or no. Yes or no. That's, I'm just interested. Curious. That's all. Now, if you'd like to find out how to get my free Create Sacred Space with Crystals e-kit right now via Facebook Messenger, just type the word sacred into the comments, just like that, sacred into the comments, and that will be delivered to you. Just watch your Facebook Messenger. It'll There'll be a little bit of a delay there, and then it'll you can figure out how to do that. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube or in in my blog on my blog or on YouTube, then just go to the description um, under the YouTube video or to directly to my blog. It's right there in the blog how to get that um, create sacred space with crystals e kit. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about my three tips here today. All right, so do you? Ever feel like sometimes you need to defend your passion for crystals and just your general interest in crystal healing powers against maybe people who try to belittle it or there's a lot of skeptics around? Um, and recently, and you probably have all seen this by now, there was a recent comedy skit that came out and it went viral on Facebook and social media in general um, with the metaphysical online community and beyond. And it made me think about this topic again. And it's about um, a woman walks into a crystal shop and she's talking to the crystal shop owner and they're displaying, well, the shop owner's displaying all the stereotypical behaviors and catchphrases and quirks and and the person who comes in is like, oh my God, this is wacko. If you haven't seen it yet, um, ask someone to send it to you because I'm sure somebody you know has and watch it. I personally think it's hysterical. However, if you're sensitive to that sort of thing or you might take offense to it, then it might not be your cup of tea. But I think it was quite a laugh because um, we need to be able to laugh at ourselves, right? I mean, some of that stuff is, I mean, this person was way over the top with the metaphysical stuff and, you know, very judgy of the person who came in and <laughs> at the end rocks get are getting thrown and it's pretty funny. Um, so, but you know, this sort of comedy can also really feed the skeptics. Like if you're a hardcore skeptic, you're like, see, that's, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's what you're into, you wacko. And it adds more fuel to their fire. And it kind of gives us that are into crystal healing a bad rap overall as a group, especially if you don't know how to see the humor in it, and I do, and look past that. And then if needed, if you don't know how to defend why you love crystals, along with how and why they work so well for many of us, because that's why we're all attracted to them, because we know inherently that they do work. And when you're able to defend it against people who belittle stuff like that um, or make fun of it, you're better able to laugh at that, right? And you feel more confident about the whole thing in general. So maybe that's, maybe it's a chicken or the egg kind of thing, or maybe that's why I can laugh at it. But, and then there are many who do not care what others think at all. And that is wonderful. That's it. End of story. Doesn't affect them at all. I love that. But many of us are affected by what uh, what others think of us and i've got a very good reason why that is it's actually hardwired into our brains okay it's an instinctual thing i'll explain more in a bit on that um we fear others the bottom line is that we fear others aren't going to take us seriously and that's a big fear and there's a reason a good reason for that fear so you may or may not but you may be hearing things like what is all this crap? How much money did you spend on all these rocks? None of this stuff works. When are you going to learn? Why are you so gullible? How much money have you spent on all these rocks? Does any of that sound familiar? Or do you have new ones that you've recently heard that you'd like to share in the comments? Because I like, I like to hear this stuff. Uh, it, it makes you question, or maybe um, I should ask the question, does it make you question 
your crystal fascination? Does it kind of shake your crystal confidence? And if it does, I totally get it because been there, heard it all. Okay. I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell it really quick here because it just, it makes sense with this whole topic. One time I went to the doctor's office and the doc was, you know, using the stethoscope and probing around and checking, looking for my heartbeat. And I forgot to take the rocks out of my bra. I no longer do that anymore, but I used to at the time have rocks in my bra. I know I'm not alone here. Um, and I forgot to take them out. And she had a complete and total poker face while I told her that, oh, those are my crystal companions for the day's energies that I wanted to infuse into my electromagnetic field. And she was just, mm -hmm, you know, <laughs> went on to the next thing. And did I sense negative judgment or was that my perception totally? I don't know, but it triggered my ancient reptile brain. Okay, so here we're going to take a quick detour. Okay, so this is the limbic system in your brain. Somebody stepped on my beautiful diagram here. I don't know who did that. Um, but because the it's called the reptile brain, and we're talking about, okay, so this is your whole brain, obviously. The green and the blue areas, the base part of your brain is the ancient reptile brain. And we call that because this limbic system, it's just under the cerebrum. It's about all a lizard has for brain function. Lizards, snakes, um, the reptile brain, you know, if you've ever have a reptile or worked with reptiles, I did quite a bit. They're very simple, emotionless beings. And the reptile brain, and that the reason is because what they have for a brain is in charge of just six things. We call them the six Fs. Let's see if I can remember them. Fight, flight, food, or feeding fear, freezing up, and fornication. You thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? <laughs> so these are the basic things. Um, it's really root chakra stuff, right? Basic things, but the limbic system is much more powerful, very powerful than we get, give it credit for. Yeah, it's basic stuff, but it's, it's supremely powerful because it, it goes the furthest back. It's the part of our brain that has the most ancestral lineage going all the way back. I even, you know, so, all right. So back to the story with the doctor, that was uncomfy for me at the time. Yeah. Even for me, my reptile brain was alive and well, and I'm not saying it's eradicated altogether now, but alive and well back then. And as it is in most of us, right, it's not a weird thing. It's just there. And I even find it difficult to just explain why I don't like to talk on a cell phone. Um, I don't like to come off as preachy to people. If someone asks me, oh, exactly why don't you like talking on the cell phone? Don't like to use it so much or have it around you all the time or on you all the time. I will lay it down. I will get, get into all the nitty gritty and the science and all of it. But if no one's asking, I don't want to just come off as preachy, even though sometimes I think I do because I can't help myself. Um, but I try not to do that. Or people probably think I sit in my house wearing a tinfoil hat most of the time. Um, okay, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> I try not to talk about this stuff unless I'm asked or you're reading my blog. And when I say this stuff, I mean the things that are considered fringe science, okay? And definitely crystal healing. But if you asked about it or you're reading my blog, that means you're here for it. You asked for it, you're gonna get it. So it's so much easier to discuss our crystal passions with someone who obviously is receptive and wants to learn about it. But when they're not receptive to it or you have a feeling that they're not receptive to it, having you explain yourself in those situations is not our idea of a good time. Because again, it's hardwired into us. It's usually met with resistance or a tinge of ridicule. Um, and that's perceived as negative energy by our reptile brain. If, if we're getting resistance from someone or we're being ridiculed or seen as someone who I don't know about that one. Maybe we need to kick them out of the tribe. Um, it's perceived as negative energy. That's your reptile brain kicking in. So realize it or not, we instinctively try to avoid those situations at all costs. So it's not weird and you're not considered like, oh my gosh, you are so not awake. If you're thinking, oh, I have no confidence around this stuff. 
it's it's going to be that way, right? So tip number one is to ignore your reptile brain. All right. You probably already know that something um, unconscious, you know, something really unconscious, like picking up a certain scent, you know, certain scents can alive in certain parts of your brain and can spark an intense emotion. And our conscious mind isn't aware and doesn't process right away why that is. That's our reptile brain taking over when that happens. And as I just said, we have a primal fear response to anything that's perceived as disapproval, a negative judgment, judgment being made on us. It's ancient reptilian hardwired auto response to avoid that. And, you know, we don't we want to avoid getting kicked out of the tribe, so to speak, or shunned by the clan. That's you know, again, basic root chakra stuff coming up. Yes, we can learn to move past this and rise above it, but it takes consistent work. All right. And just as a side note, I've found that once we get past the hardwired fear and ancient auto response to not be negatively judged, and we can show the courage to just be who we are and defend our stance, the real me is often welcomed with open arms by people you would never expect to welcome it. So my advice is just own it. Understand and realize it's reptile brain stuff and just own it. No one's really going to kick you out of any clan. I don't know. Maybe maybe you do belong to some kind of clan like that. Um, but it, we're most of us, I think, in in modern day world really don't have to worry about that. Um, you'd be surprised how many people come out of the woo-woo closet themselves when they know it's safe to talk about crystals with you. <laughs> you'd be so surprised. I had lots of experience with this while I was still a science teacher working in the public school system. Um, for those of you that don't know, I, I used to be a science department chair for 13 years, had lots of experience with that. You would think that those in the academic community would be very closed off to this sort of thing. But when it was last resort time on many situations, many in that community came to me to ask what crystal work they could do to remedy whatever their issue was, whatever the problem was. OK, uh, next, I'm going to give you two more effective tips for shaking off the crystal critics and boosting your confidence. And I, I brought along my natural citrine point in this bright light. It looks like it's clear, but it's actually a natural citrine point to just give us all a little bit of confidence, beaming that energy out to you right now. You can kind of see the, the gold tint to that and the clarity is amazing. And look at the veils in there. Isn't that a beauty? Uh, we'll do some Q&A at the end, too. And remember, if you didn't already share, please hit share. Share this out into your live stream. If we get 100 shares of this live stream, at least I'm going to choose three of you here live today to send a copy of my book, Crystal Grids, How and Why They Work. Okay. So, um, oh, and I left this here, so I still get confused with all this stuff. Um, and if you'd like to find out how to get my Sacred Space with Crystals e-kit uh, right now, via Facebook Messenger, just type the word sacred, and here we go, um, sacred into the comments, and that will be delivered to you. And if you're watching this on YouTube or on my blog, click on the description box below the video or go to my blog, and it'll explain to you exactly right there. You don't have to type anything how to get it. Okay, just the word sacred into the comments if you're on Facebook. Okay, so let me just take a drink of water. We're going to get to the other two tips. Oh, I shouldn't close that. All right. So tip number two that I just spit, I'm sorry, is to find a solid community. All right. This is important. Now, some of you are loners and you're like, I don't need no community and that's fine. But even for us loners, of which I am one, once in a while, it's nice to have that solid community along with you, along for the ride. We all want to feel like we belong to the tribe right? We just discussed that. So no one likes feeling like nobody's on their side. You feel a bit vulnerable, right? So we like to feel strong and in control and being in a group of other like-minded people who are also nuts for the crystals can be so empowering and supportive because they're all going through the same stuff as you and you get to pool resources and information and join forces with them and collaborate on stuff. 
We need each other because being part of a community also gives us confidence and strength in our beliefs. So yeah, this may also mean that you may need to spend less time or remove yourself completely from hanging out with people who are holding you back and won't accept who you are. All right, so something to think about there. Um, so the value of having a community in place is, I mean, it's infinite value. It's immeasurable. Um, you get that built-in motivation, built-in inspiration, and accountability partners when you need them. Without that support system in place, you're going it alone. And it, uh, it's hard to go it alone, even if you are a seasoned loner, 100%, you know, 100% alone. Um, and just to let you know, in my Certified Crystal Healer course, in addition to your peers and the alumni, you also get reliable mentors I've put in place to coach you through. And that's totally absent when you go it alone. Not to mention, you can build fabulous, amazing new friendships that spring up from a community like that. Uh, it certainly doesn't have to be my courses group. There are many out there, many others out there. On Facebook alone, there are real like face-to-face -face live groups you can join up. Um, here, But here's what to look for. Don't just join any old group. Be mindful. Don't join tons of groups because then you're going to be spread too thin and you're really not going to get the most out of any of the groups that you're in. So here's what to look for. Try to find a group either in person or online that has these three things going for them because not all groups have them. So number one, you want mentors who are supportive. Okay. So if there's, well, we'll just leave it at that. Members who are supportive. I'm sure you know how to figure out if they're supportive or not. Um, the group should offer motivation and inspiration. And number three, holds a positive vibe. They, they see that as an important component and they take it seriously. So zero tolerance for gossiping and negativity. And it's actively moderated. Like somebody's in charge of that. Because if nobody's in charge of it, it ain't going to get done. And it's not going to be pretty. So again, it can be an in-person group that meets regularly or even a virtual online one. Maybe you can make one up on your own. There's lots of them out there already. Finding a group like this does wonders for allowing you to be you and encouraging you to grow to your full potential. And it builds crystal confidence, you know, with working with your crystals, just knowing you have this like-minded, high-vibe tribe who has your back, okay? So, and of course, we've made sure that my group has all that and more in spades. All right, so the third tip, the next one is to back it up with science. All right, so some of you might disagree with me on this, and that's totally okay, but I do have a healthy amount of confidence around discussing what I do when I'm directly asked, or you know, it's just an unavoidable topic in a conversation. And I know that's because I can explain the science behind how and why the crystals work. And it's not just for me. I've heard this over and over and over again from our over 1,600 graduates now that this is where their confidence comes from. Okay, so now that being said, having science to back up how crystals work isn't the end all be all. Science doesn't prove everything or anything, but that's another topic of debate we can get into. But this is always, you know, when something is scientifically proven, there's always some uncertainty that comes along with our beloved scientific conclusions, right? Despite what some might think, science never. 100% proves anything. So no, not everything should need a scientific explanation, nor does everything have one. There's so many things that don't have scientific explanations and yet they exist. Crystal healing, one of them. But like it or not, in today's world, in our society, science is king. Scientific explanations hold mega value. Being able to explain something scientifically holds a lot of weight. That's why people love to get some science in with their metaphysics. I know, I know this is exactly why my Certified Crystal Healer course became so popular right away because there were no, no other courses doing that. And 
so many people came in and it was like, oh my gosh, science with the crystal healing, this is exactly what I need. Because again, being a former science teacher and science department head, I can provide that in spades. Science is the backbone of my course. When it comes to explaining crystal healing to others, if they, especially if they're skeptics, I simply just throw some science at it and that usually gets them to sit up and listen. It opens the door for a skeptic with respect, a respectful door. Okay. So I can definitely help you with tips number one and, or I'm sorry, two and three. And I've seen number one, which is ignore your reptile brain come naturally as a result of providing the science and a solid community to my students in my course. So not to say that you can't achieve those things on your own without taking my course, you most certainly can. Come on. Uh, all you have to do is just put your mind to it, put your energy into it, and put your energy towards that goal, and you're going to manifest it. But if you do want my help, and you want me to help you along on this path as your teacher, Registration for my course will be open to the public very, very soon. So if you're on the wait list, you have limited access right now. You've received an invite. If you're thinking about it, get in now because tuition is going to be increasing and because we have to do it by $500 for our fall term. So if you're thinking, I'll wait for it down the line, now is your time. Registration's only going to be open for a few days. So keep an eye out. If you'd like to get on the wait list right now and you're not on it, go to hibiscusmoonjoin.com, go to hibiscusmoonjoin.com and you will be able to get on that wait list right now and just see a little preliminary info about the course. So now remember, we're gonna do some stuff here. Um, I wanna give you one of my favorite quotes though, before we go there, just to think on all this stuff. Um, and this is a quote by Arthur Schopenhauer and I hope I'm saying that correctly. He's a German philosopher. Um, and he said, all truth passes through three stages. One, first, it's ridiculed. Two, second, it's violently opposed. Three, third, it is accepted as being self-evident. And isn't that true? Isn't that how all new truths come to be, right? All right, one more brilliant quote from my favorite physicist, Nassim Haramine. He said, we are still in our infancy, infancy of exploring and discovering our local environment. There are people alive today who, when they were young, were told the universe was many, many times smaller than they're being told today. Perhaps this progression will only accelerate when we prove the universe we are in is only one of an infinite number of other universes in the hollow fractographic multiverse. He's so deep. I, I love that guy. So I find getting defensive and negative as we tend to do because that's our reptile brain again. It gets us nowhere. So let's forget that reaction. Um, same with clamming up from lack of confidence. It actually feeds the skeptics. All right. So if we want people to hear us, the music needs to be pleasing, right? Otherwise, they're going to slam the door and leave. But I also really secretly love it when you can just smack them skeptics around with some science. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Um, this is a little thing, you know, and it kind of naturally happens. It's kind of funny, but actually it's 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 done respect of, respectfully always. So, you know, let's keep it there. Let's keep it like that. OK, everybody, this was tons of fun. Super fun. Thank you so much for joining me. I had a lot this this is a great topic, one of my favorite ones to talk about because I like to boost you up with the confidence. Here's a little bit more citrine energy and crystal blessings to my crystal family members out there and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.